<laughs> hey, YouTube. A lot of people were interested in how to do the Astra Pump, so that is what we are tackling this video. I've never done this before, so bear with me, there might be some wrong things. Don't take this all too literally, as I say with anything I do on these videos. So I'm going to start by pulling off the belt, power steering pump, replacing that idler pulley, and then see where we go from there. And this is what we're replacing. So we pulled this smooth one off and you're replaced with an SV6 idler pulley. Now the offsets on these are a little different so you do need to space this one out because if you sit it flush against this, the pulley hits this. So you need a washer here to space it out a little bit. Now I'm gonna do my best to document this whole process really well so that if anyone is doing this, they can sort of come back to this video. And also at the end, I am going to give a price breakdown of exactly what every little nut washer bolt cost to do this swap to an early Commodore. So we're starting off with, you need to get rid of this top pulley, which you saw, the smooth one. And you need to go to one of these, which is this brand that I got, Daco, uh, part number EP030. And you also have to space it out because the offset's different on these. If you run nothing behind it, it fouls here on the alternator bracket. So what you do is you need to get a washer that has the right internal diameter to slip over this sleeve. Like that, just to get it off the alternator bracket. And those are Champion BH176. And also you need a shorter belt because obviously you've gotten rid of the power steering pump which I have found this one fits 6PK1385. Now you may be able to fit one a little bit bigger or one a little bit smaller, but this is the one that fit that was in stock at the time. So this is now how your belt is run without a power steering pump. So under here, over, around the alternator, etc., etc. Now, you're not gonna be able to see, but there is, I'm talking millimeter room between this pulley and the bracket. So up to you whether you want to run one washer, two washers, whatever. I'm gonna try my luck with one. If it touches, then I'll take it apart and I'll add another one. The reason I'm just starting with one is because I don't wanna push it out too far where it throws sort of the belt alignment out. I don't want this car to throw belts. Now, a problem that I did actually read about, but I was just hoping for some reason it wouldn't affect me, but it does, uh, are these two bolts on the alternator bracket. So as you can see, the belt touches this one and the belt also touches this one. So the fix for that with uh, what I've read online is to do countersunk bolts into that bracket uh, so it doesn't touch them. I don't have any yet, so I'll add that later on. Now I did forget to mention this car also has a 25% underdrive crank pulley. So don't really follow this video to the part number if you're running a standard crank pulley because the belt's gonna be different. And also, if you have a standard crank pulley, I reckon uh, it'll clear this bottom bolt, but you're still gonna have the top bolt problem. So just remember that if you have a standard crank pulley. So on to trying to get this uh, belt to work as now the belt goes right across where that bolt is and right across where that bolt is and touches the head. So what I have done, first, I was going to countersink these, but it was going to be too much for stuff, stuff around, trying to get the right bolts, lengths, because these are pretty long. So all I did was I shaved the head of these bolts down, so this is just an example of what it used to look like compared to... So it's only a couple of mil, so just off these two that are here, and I've also shaved down, as you can see, this now has a step in it here, so I've taken a few mil off there, and a few mil off there as well. And also, where this pulley sits, now it, it did clear with this washer, but it was very, very close. So all I've done is shaved the area here with a flappy disc on the grinder. And now, as you can see, plenty of room between there. So that is how you get the belt to miss the bolt. So I'll put this all together and I'll show you exactly what I mean. And here we go with it all back together. So as you can see, with this notched out, 
and the bolt machine down. It clears nicely. There's no way that's going to hit that, the top one. Or the bottom one down there. So that is all good to go. And as you can see, that belt fits up nicely. So again, that is a 6PK1385 if you have a 25% underdrive pulley. And nice spacing between the bracket and the idler itself. Got a mate Marcus coming at the moment who is an auto elect, so I need to go about mounting this pump to the car. Now the plan has always been to put it right about here, if you can see. And Low Fabrications makes this ready to go mount. So I purchased one of these, powder coated, ready to go. So this will obviously go on the back here and allow you to mount it to a flat surface like that. And they also give you a free lollipop, which is also a good bonus. So this is where it's gonna be mounted. Now, if you do have a keen eye and you know VNs, you'll notice that the tow hook here is gone, which I'll show you on the other side. So I had to remove that, or well, obviously it won't sit flat. So this is gonna be mounted like so. So it's actually the perfect size. It just fits between where the bar Rio would finish and the sway bar starts. So it just finish, fits between here. The unfortunate thing is, because the pump is so tall, I'm gonna to have to mount it like this with only two bolts. So the bottom of the bracket is sorta of gonna be hanging down below. If I mount it any higher, I'm going to have to cut a big stinking hole in here into the engine bay, which there's no way in hell I'm going to do that. I would rather have two bolts holding this thing on. I might put an extra one in the middle. We'll see how we go. So I'm going to nut certain mount these like I did the dipstick. The really good thing about where I'm mounting it is the holes are going to be inside the rail. So from the engine bay, you're not going to see any mounting holes and nothing like that, which is perfect. So from the in, in the engine bay, you won't be able to see this at all or notice that it is below. This is the absolute spaghetti bolognese mess that we're starting with. Why you would use red for everything is beyond me. So hopefully Marcus can figure out what's what because everything's the same color. And uh, I will show you what he gets to when we finish at the end. Hopefully this is all hooked up, power steering pump done, everything wired up that needs to be wired up. I might even try con him into wiring in the stuff for the shifter, like the reverse lights and stuff like that and the thing so it doesn't start while it's in, not in park. But we'll see how keen he is today. So before I start putting this all together, I thought I'll show you how this all sits. So this is how the bracket mounts to the pump. And obviously holds it in here. So I've got it sitting on a jack at the moment pretty much the exact height and spot I need it and still be able to get the cap off. So there's really not much meat hanging this thing on, but we'll see how we go. One thing I've just noticed while looking under here how to make this thing a bit more sturdy is a simple L bracket right here from the sway bar bracket along and down to this hole. So three out of four ain't bad. So as you can see, this is how we have ended up mounting it. So it's only got two bolts, but that is not going anywhere. I could hang off that with all my 60 kilos and that would not move. So I've done an earth strap for it, sanded that all down nice as you saw. This is the wiring is gonna run across here, across there, up, up here in the gap in the headlight. And then up under here with all this wiring and to the battery. So I thought I would just quickly, quickly get onto the transmission lines. Now these turned out to be a massive pain in the ass. So from the front here, I did a dash 690. Here I'm going to do a dash six straight, which I couldn't get in time for the weekend. So that's just going to go there. Uh, straight beside the radiator is a nice loose fit. They're not sort of rubbing on anything. I was going to maybe go through here, but it's too sharp of a turn. I didn't want to kink the braid and also it would be very tight on this edge here. So they obviously run down here. I'm going to put something on this edge. Uh, I need to buy some more separators as these ones are too big. So it goes along here, goes behind the brake lines as the brake lines sort of hold it away from everything. 
runs behind the fuel lines I ran before. Sort of up over and down the tunnel. I didn't want to go straight across because the headers are right there. So the plan was just keep it as far away from headers as possible. And this is pretty much the only way I thought, or I think you can run it because you can't go across the headers because obviously it's going to melt the line. So I had to go up the tunnel and sort of like a loop like this and over. Now underneath the car, oh my God, I've been battling this for two nights and I'll show you why. So as you can see, I've had to drop the trans down very far. That's as far as it will drop. I even had to take the fuel reg off the back of the rail because that was hitting the firewall and just to get that extra like centimeter or two. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to see, but this is where I had to get my hand. So down here to get the fittings on the side of the case. And you can see here, that's them right there. So I had to fit my hand through this gap here to do them up with a very, very stubby spanner. So obviously when this is up, the headers are all the way up and they're against the rail and against the pan. So that is the only way I could get my hands in there to do up those fittings. Had to take a tail shaft back out again just to get some more drop. And now they're on and that is done. That was very, very painful doing just two transmission cooler lines. Hopefully, oh my God, if they leak at the transmission, this car's going on Gumtree for five grand and it's someone else's problem. So that's it for transmission lines. Now, I didn't want to show actually running them. And, you know, you've seen a million times fittings on the end of the lines. You don't really need to see that again. So I can put it all back together, tail shaft back in, cross member back up and bolt it up, put the fuel reg back on the end of the rail. And that's another thing checked off the list. All right, we're going for lunch and I think Marcus is going to let me drive his freshly cammed VX. As you can probably hear. <laughs> What are you doing wiring wise? Anyway, all you gotta do to wire up an Astra power steering pump is an Alice One <laughs> VN, shopvcm.com.au. <laughs> wire that to oh that. Oh my god. That to that. And you know the rest? Bob Gianni.
What a long day. So many hours and it feels like we've got nothing done. So this is where we've left off with the wiring. This side's all done. We've just got to shorten up this as it's very, very long for some reason. It's all been retaped in nice tape. All this is the 4L60 stuff. All the back is all done, all this. I don't know if you remember how big this was. Like this was like twice the size when it had all the conduit and stuff on it. Now it fits up in these hooks nicely like factory. Really, really clean. So tomorrow, continue with this side and all the stuff at the front, alternator, starter, and then that'll be all done. A lot of stuff got chopped out that was unneeded. I'm gonna run it all back through and chop it all out. It seems like something so simple just to retape everything, but oh my god, it's taking forever. But we are stuffing around a bit, so that doesn't help. So next day now, and I'm doing this one just to prove a point in the comments. There's a few people that have mentioned why the hell would you put your bumper up on top of your hot water service? It's gonna be warped. Good luck getting that back on. Three things to point out. One. It's still got the metal Rio on it. It's not warping. Two, your hot water service does not get that hot that it's gonna warp a bumper bar. And three, I don't even plan putting this bumper bar back on. I'm gonna get the rare spares one. So calm down in the comments and I'm gonna prove to you that it's not warped and put the bar on. Back at Marcus's, it's like a Commodore SS museum here. VYSS VTSS 5 litre VXSS Tirana under the covers Is this an SS? Piece of shit. <laughs> I found it <laughs> oh. Don't fall over as they said, you fucking dumb cunt. <laughs> Why are you cracking the shits? Killer VN getting the BC Coelos. The boot nearly fell off. <laughs> fell totally off. fell off the jack <laughs> So I'm gonna have to apologize in advance for this absolute shit show of a video because as I've been editing it, all right, I've realized it is all over the places. Probably one of the shittest videos I've ever made. There's just crap everywhere. I filmed it over probably two weeks I've been piecing this video together. Bits here, bits there, and it all just gets, oh no, it's all over the place. So I do apologize, and I don't think I'm gonna finish this in time for this video. So I ordered uh, two fittings that I need to hook up this power steering lines, and they still haven't come. Over a week ago I ordered them. I thought they were, they were supposed to come next day, and they still haven't come, so it really stuffed me for this video. So I'm just gonna put in as much as we can get done. It is now the Tuesday before this video goes up, so I'm filming this the day before it goes up, and there's no way I'd can get the fittings in time so i'm gonna have to probably continue this on the next video where i'll break down the costs and stuff like that but max is coming tonight to do some more wiring so i'm just going to piece in whatever we get done tonight and that's pretty much going to be the end of this video because we can't finish it so i do apologize and i promise to finish this stuff up next video so as i said this video is a bit of a disaster and we actually had two more disasters tonight one being i went to fit up speedo stuff and this snapped off it all three wires so that's for the bin and two we cut this for the crank sensor to make it shorter as it was really long and when we peeled back the tape all the wires were the same color so had to untape this whole side back to where it went back to three different colors because someone had extended it at some point just to find which wire went to which so pretty much the car's back to how it was the last time marcus was here but so the power steering pump we powered up it starts up sounds fine only for a second because um it's got no fluid in it still because i didn't get fittings to do the lines 
But it's all wired up, so wiring runs down here along the front under the headlight. And Marcus managed to clean up this side really, really nice. So it's got a big 80 amp fuse down here for the pump. Everything retaped and all sort of hidden nice. I've neatened these up with some of these separators. And that's pretty much it. So again, sorry for this being a bit of a shamble video and this was supposed to be simple. Just do the power steering pump, show how to do it, break down the cost for everyone. But I'm gonna have to continue it next video. Sorry guys. See you next week.